Hey everyone there in Physics 40S land, it's Dr. Carroll. This is Unit 6, Lecture 2. We're going to talk about electric fields because now you are experts at electrostatic forces, also known as Coulomb forces, and just at the general concepts of the basic laws of electrostatics, electrification by friction, electrification by sharing. We even looked at an induction case with a balloon and a wall. So, Electric fields is what our topic is today. It's on the middle of page 17. Then we jump, because I mixed up some pages, to 29 and 30 pages, and then back to page 18. So it's like choose your own adventure here. Um, so when you think of a field, you think of a construct in which you feel a force, if we're talking about a force field. And an electric force field, also called electrostatic field, also just called an electric field, does just that. If you aren't changed at all in your motion, uh, don't feel any forces, then you aren't in an electric field. But if you are, there's some interesting equations. So let's take a look at them right now. So the symbol we're going to use for electric fields is a capital E with a uh, vector sign it or a curly E which is more often used, and so that's what I'm going to write here, a curly E. And it's obviously related to electric force. It is the electric force divided by charge. So the units are not newtons, like they are for electric force. They're newtons per coulomb. So how many newtons does one coulomb of charge feel when placed at some point in an electric field. Later on in this chapter, we're going to see that newtons per coulomb uh, is the same as volts per meter. Okay, so that's going to come up later on in this chapter. So, um, the magnitude of the electric field is sometimes just written as absolute value bars around the vector. And the electric field is here's the definition it's the electric force divided by let's say the charge that's feeling the electric field let's call that qb so due to uh, charge a an electric field is set up and the force felt by charge b is that electric field so Right. If I remember from last class, K, last lecture, K, Q, A. By the way, the lectures can sometimes be more than one class, as we're seeing. Uh, K, Q, A, Q, B over R squared, then divided by Q, B. So the Q, B's cancel. So the electric field can also be written due to source charge A is K, Q, A over R squared. So both those equations are helpful in calculating the electric field, which we can use curly E or the other E. So then if I cross multiply, the electric force is the charge that we're looking at times the electric field set up at the point we're looking at. Sometimes B is called a probe charge or a test charge. And uh, let's look at some cases. So let's be graphical here. Case one, let's say we have an uh, electric field where the source is a positive and we originate at the surface of the source and we terminate at an infinitely high place away, infinitely far place away. So I can draw these little lines which are perpendicular to the surface. They're called electric field lines and they get farther apart the farther you get from the surface. What they say is it's the direction a positive test charge would fly, would move if placed there. And so the source doesn't move, it's positive. So the positive test charge is going to fly away from there. Okay, and uh, let me make sure I'm recording. Once or twice I've done this and it turns out I have been recording and 17 hours later I go, oh, okay. So now let me zoom down to page uh, 29 and uh, that will look at the second case where we're going to look at an isolated source charge and then we will uh, look at the electric field lines if the isolated source charge is negative. I mean, your source charge is either going to be positive or negative. And as you can imagine, we're going to look at cases where you can have more than one source charge. But for now, we're just looking at the uh, first 
only source charge and it'd be negative. So if our source charge is negative, then the electric field lines will originate at an infinitely far away position and they will approach the uh, equilibrium, uh, not the equilibrium, I'm thinking about chemistry now, they will approach the um, surface of the sphere. So here you go, page 29. So the electric lines uh, originate at infinity and then they go towards the source. Okay, so a positive test charge or just a positive charge would, here's a positive charge, it would zoom towards the source. And uh, so you have to be able to draw electric field line diagrams for isolated sources. And also for this next one here on page 29, which is called a compound electric field. And some of you maybe last year actually uh, traced these out or calculated them. You probably also did it for magnetic fields, which is coming up much later on in the course. So, uh, the compound electric field, you have more than one source. So here we have QA, which is positive, and QB is negative. So between the two, any positive test charge is going to zoom away from A, oops, and zoom towards B, right? Anywhere between them. If I go up here, well, it zooms away from A, and zooms towards the negative charge, which I just call, decided to call negative QA. Well, that's an important point. In a dipole, the two charges are of opposite sign, but they're the same absolute value. So if QA is 6 microcoulombs, then negative QA is negative 6 microcoulombs. That creates a dipolar field. So we have the regions between the two of them. And we also have, if I look out to the left of QA, well, then a positive charge would just keep zooming away, but here a little in the fourth quadrant, a little closer to negative QA, it starts to curve. The electric field line starts to curve and then goes all the way around. Curve your enthusiasm, right? And here on the top, and it goes all the way around. So uh, you have to be able to draw dipolar fields. And in example two, you have QA and QA, so they're both the same charge. That's not called the dipolar field. It's still a uh, compound field because there's two sources, but your uh, charges are going to zoom away and then at the exact midpoint between the two there's going to be no charge because the positive test charge doesn't know what to do there, right? It's equally repelled by QA and QA on a uh, equidistant side from the midpoint. So there is no force at that midpoint. Example three is just showing what if both charges were negative. So the only difference between that and example two is the direction of the arrowheads. So that is uh, when you have um, a dipolar field. You could do more, you could do quadrupolar, you could do fancier ones than that. But these are the uh, three um, examples and you're going to have to be able to draw those. Another example you're going to have to draw which we'll get to a little later is what's called a uniform electric field where you set up a battery so you have a voltage and you have um, the positive longer line is a positive plate on the top and a negative plate on the bottom so any a uh, positive test charge between them will zoom away from the positive end and go towards the negative end. And that is what we call a uniform electric field. And uh, if you get really into electronics and talk about capacitors, capacitors uh, exhibit uniform electric fields when they are manufactured. Okay, so uh, we'll talk a bit more about uniform electric fields, and this is called parallel plate apparatus because you can think of these as metal plates they are fashioned parallel to each other and then when the electric current goes through which what happens when we hook up a dry cell or generator to the uh, parallel plates we create a uniform electric field between them at the boundaries there's something called a boundary effect and 
uh, that's interesting too. But we'll focus mostly on the uniform electric field between the two plates. Okay, so now let's go back to square one and look at some numerical examples to evaluate um, the direction and magnitude of an electric field. So in my first example, I have a source charge, which is 3 coulombs, and I'm looking 6 centimeters uh, south of that. So I want to get the electric field at that point. And I use the little asterisk to represent the positive test charge. So you pretend there's a positive test charge there, which tells you then that the direction of the electric field has to be to the south because my source is 3 coulombs, a positive test charge is a going to be repelled by that 3 coulombs, so it's going to be pushed down. Or you just draw the electric field lines that we just looked at, and that also tells you that the electric field has to be going south. And the I don't know the force, so I'm going to use the other form of the calculation for electric field, so it's going to be K times the charge of the source in coulombs over the distance squared, so KQ over R squared. So 9 by 10 to the 9 times 3 divided by 0 0.06 squared, and you get 7.5 by 10 to the 12th newtons per coulomb directed uh, south. So that is my electric field. Um, and uh, so that's, that's how it works. <laughs> uh, you see that if we would have been closer my electric field would have been stronger, right? Because my R would have been smaller. Or if I had a greater source charge, my electric field would be stronger. So what this means is if I actually take a real 1 Coulomb charge and place it at that point, that star point, it would feel 7.5 trillion Newtons. Okay. Second example. Here we go. We have a source charge which is negative 5 microcoulombs. So the position, the star position, the electric field is going to be directed to the left because a positive test charge would want to move to the left. Okay, the reason compass direction is fine. So west. So the electric field is K, 9 by 10 to the 9, times the opposite value, 5 by 10 to the minus 6 coulombs over 2 millimeters, so 2 by 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. And you get 1.1 by 10 to the 10 newtons per coulomb per the, to the west. Okay, now, what if you have two sources? So that's what's happening in example three. We have one source charge is positive, three microcoulombs, and the other source charge is negative, minus five microcoulombs. And here's where some kids get tripped up. Let's hope you don't get tripped up on this. The electric field at point B is my first question. Okay, so I want to get the electric field at point B. What you do is you pretend there's a positive test charge on B. I know there's not, but to answer the question, you pretend there is, and it covers up the real live charge on B. You don't talk about self-charges. So you, the electric field at point B is created by the other source charge. If there's only one other one in this example, A, 3 microcoulombs. The direction is going to be to the right because a positive test charge would move to the right. So you replace your minus 5 microcoulombs to solve this part of the question with a positive test charge. It goes to the right, and the magnitude of the electric field at that point is K, 9 by 10 to 9, times 3 by 10 to minus 6, over 5 squared. Okay, So 1.1 by 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb directed to the east. Okay? Um, so that is the electric field at point B. The electric field at point A, well, again, you don't think that the, there's a 3 microcoulomb charge there. You replace it with a positive test charge, and that will be directed to the right or east. So the electric field at point A is set up by charge B. So 9 by 10 to the 9 times the charge of B, 5 by 10 to the minus 6, over 5 squared. And you get 1.8 by 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb to the east. So again, you have to be careful what you're asked for. If I then wanted forces, you would do F equals QE. 
to get that. Okay, we've got a few more. On page 30, we have um, a dipole. Right, so you got a two coulomb charge on A, a minus two coulomb charge on B, but we also want to get some stuff at point Z and a bit of other information. So here we go. Calculate the electric field at the star point. So the star point is point Z, so we're going to have two uh, contributions, one from A and one from B. The contribution from A is going to be to the right because a positive test charge would move to the right due to having a positive source charge. B is a negative source charge, so it would be to the left. So you're having a battle between rights and lefts, and the left is going to win this time because B is much closer to Z than A is to Z. So uh, you get the magnitudes uh, A at Z, 9 by 10 to 9 times 2 over the distance from A to Z is 10 plus 2, 12 squared, and the other one to the left, 9 by 10 to 9 times 2 over 2 squared. So when you calculate that out, you get uh, a winner. Now here we used a negative sign there, but just get your left and your right. Left is larger, and your value will be 4.375 by 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb to the left. Um, I don't know why it shouldn't say that. Then here... In the second example over here, we're asking at the midpoint, the little m standing for midpoint, and it's not going to be zero. If they were both two coulombs, it would be zero at the midpoint, but they aren't. Uh, the positive test charge moves to the right due to A and moves to the right due to B, and they're the same numbers, right? 9 by 10 to 9 times 2 over 5 squared, midpoint, half of 10 is 5, and that's due to A, and due to B is also 9 by 10 to 9 times 2 over 5 squared. So... Um, we have then that the uh, net electric field is 1.44 by 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb directed to the right. And so uh, that's how we get the electric field there. Okay, now, what if we take a real live, here in example three, a real live charge, 9 coulombs, is placed at point Z. So now we put a 9 coulomb charge at Z. We can get the force for that. And you're going to say, oh, I have to use Coulomb's law twice. No, you don't. You already know the electric field at that point. And you got that. It was 4.375 by 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb directed to the left for a positive test charge, where a real charge would if it's positive, would go in the same direction. So all you do is you take your 9 coulombs multiplied by your 4.375 by 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. So the coulombs cancel out, so you get newtons. 3.94 by 10 to the 10 newtons directed to the left. So if you know the electric field at some point, don't reinvent the wheel if they want the force. Just multiply the, the charge you're placing at that point times that electric field and get the force. If the charge you're placing is positive, it's the same direction as the electric field. If it's negative, it's the opposite direction. Now also we snuck this in. Let's refresh everything. And now put a minus 3 coulomb charge at the midpoint. Call the midpoint. Okay. Three micro, <laughs> minus 3 micro coulomb charge at M. If it was a positive 3 coulomb, you would just do 3 coulombs times 1.44 by 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb because that is the electric field at the midpoint. But it's negative, so uh, so this is wrong, isn't it? Well, if we place a minus three microcoulomb charge, a positive three microcoulomb charge would be to the right, but this is going to be to the left because I put a minus three coulomb charge at m. M was directed to right, so this would be to the left. Okay, uh, here's one. What if what if you just told that I'm still on page 30 and I just jumping ahead here. Um, 
you're told that there's a charge of 0.33 microcoulombs feeling an electric force of 0.1 newtons. Can you get the electric field at that point? I don't know where that point is, but yes, I can, because electric field is just F over Q. So 0.1 newtons over 0.33 by 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, 3.03 .03 by 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb. So that is the electric field at uh, the point in question. Okay. Um, the next example is uh, 5 by 10 to the 11 elementary charges. Not sure what's happening with that example. Let's see, I can convert that to coulombs. I can get the electric field. Um, and I guess I could ask what the force associated with that is. So the force would be Q times E. So if you, yeah, sometimes you're given the electric field and uh, you're given the um, charges in elementary charge units. So you got to convert that. But if I just want to get the magnitude of the force, got to convert to coulombs. So 8 by 10 to 8th minus times uh, 5,000. 4 by 10 to minus 4 newtons. Okay? So here's another example. This is a nice uh, example of putting some things together. I have a QA of 5 coulombs, QB of 3 coulombs, and they're 2 meters from each other. So the electric field at point B is going to be due to A. So it's 9 by 10 to the 9 times charge A5 over the distance between them 2 squared. And a positive test charge goes to the right. So the electric field at point B is 1.125 by 10 to the 10 newtons per coulomb to the right. The electric field at point A, you don't say at charge A, you say at point A. So you pretend that there's a positive test charge on A, so it'll be to the left. And it's due to source charge B. So 9 by 10 to the 9 times 3 over 2 squared, which is 4. Um, and uh, you get 6.75 by 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb directed to the left. Force on QB, I could go back and what we learned in lecture 1 and use Coulomb's law. Or I could just take... The charge now on B, which is 3 coulombs times the electric field at B, 1.125 by 10 to the 10 newtons per coulomb, multiply them together, and I get 3.375 by 10 to the 10 newtons, and it's directed to the right because the actual force I'm putting there is to the right. If it was a negative 3 coulombs, then it would be directed to the left. And the force on QA, well, that was going to be directed to the left because the electric field is to the left. And uh, QA is positive. So you just take the charge of QA, which is 5 coulombs times the electric field, on or at point, electric field at point A due to source B, 6.75 by 10 to 9 newtons per coulomb. And you get 3.375 by 10 to 10 newtons going to the left. Okay. Now let me go up a bit here. I have to go back to page 18. Oh, that's faster, isn't it? As I'm just paging up. Okay, page 17. We looked at that, lecture 2. And now, page 18. So here I have an example where I have three uh, source charges in part A, and I want to get the electric field at D. So there's no charge at D yet, but there's a 2 microcoulomb charge 5 meters away from D, a B microcoulomb charge 10 plus 5, 50 meters away um, from B, and a 15 and 15, 30 meters away from C is the, uh, I got to get the electric field at D. So electric field of 
D due to A is to the left, due to B is to the left, due to C is to the right. So I get 9 by 10 to 9 times 2 by 10 to minus 6 over 5 squared, plus 9 by 10 to minus 9, sorry, 9 by 10 to the positive 9, times 4 by 10 to minus 6 over 15 squared. Those are both to the left. Add them together and then compare them to the one on the right, which is much farther away, even though it's charge C is a little bit more than B and A. But the rights are going to win, so you uh, sorry, the lefts are going to win. You combine the lefts together, subtract the right from it, and your net is a positive value. 830 newtons per coulomb to the left. So at point D, the electric field is 830 newtons per coulomb. If I now put a minus 4 micro coulomb charge at D, I can calculate the force. So I don't have to go back and do all these pairings of Coulomb's law. Force calculations, I can just say, look, I got the electric field, it's 830 newtons per coulomb, multiply that by 4 by 10 to minus 6 coulombs, and there's my magnitude, 3.32 by 10 to minus 3 newtons. Now a positive charge would go in the same direction as a positive test charge, will go to the left. But in B, I'm putting in negative 4 microcoulombs, so the charge is going to be directed to the right. We can do right angle, triangle questions with electric field. Here's one. Uh, I could ask you to calculate the electric field at point B, and the actual charge of B is 2 coulombs, but that doesn't contribute to the electric field at B. But A of 3 coulombs and 10 meters away does, and C of minus 5 coulombs and 4 meters away does. So A pushes B down or south, and C pushes B to the right. So you've got something down, something to the right. So you're going to veer into the uh, fourth quadrant. So I get the value A at B is 9 by 10 to 9 times 3 over 10 squared. C at B is 9 by 10 to 9 times 5 over 4 squared. So I go 2.81 by 10 to 9 to the right and 2.7 by 10 to the 8 to the down. Do your Pythagorean theorem and your force on QB is 5.64 by 10 to the 9 newtons east, 5.49 degrees south. Okay, so uh, that's the story on electric fields. And again, you can watch one of our curated videos or Khan Academy is also good on electric fields. Remember, some of these videos that uh, I've curated do not all use exactly the same notation for electric field. So you have to listen to the words really well as well. Um, so I'm going to go uh, for a walk in a field now because I've heard that I'm outstanding in my field. Ha! Huh. Okay, you just keep on laughing till, till we meet again. And we'll talk about electric potential energy in our third lecture.